back. I hate the fact that Angel opens stuff up within. within the same frame. Here's some examples of really bad font, cho font choices. And again, these aren't real, but they're meant to illustrate a point. These are kind of funny, at least I think so. If it's possible to have typographical humor, this, this would be it. Agatha's massage parlor. What's wrong with that? Yeah, it's, it's hard to read and it, it looks rough. It does not look relaxing. If I was going to a place that offered massage therapy, I would not go to some place that, that looks like it's going to make me more tense. All right? Big Al's Harley Davidson Riders Club. Yeah, that, that doesn't really look like the kind of type you'd see. All right. Art B. Little, typographer. Kind of a, a horrible, ugly-looking font for someone that says this. Ashley's Tax Accounting Service. Even with a misspelling. Yeah, it looks like something, yeah, get done. <laughs> be very, very calm now. This, one, <laughs> this might be one of my favorites, you know. It's like the, the joke, the prayer, you know, Lord, give me patience now, you know, <laughs> same idea. Bruiser's football and hockey studio. <laughs> this is a little more subtle. Ralph and Joe ceramic tile and masonry. Gee, don't use a font that has cracks in it if your business <laughs> is selling tile, right? <laughs> Country manor, spacious, uh, restful, relaxed. Sing and quiet. Toddler's daycare. Yeah, it looks like a random. Yeah, exactly. Seems like Amanda's hiding something in ulterior motive. Cosmetic dentistry. Eaton Wells wedding and events catering service. What's wrong with that? Fine. Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like, you know, if you were going to a catering service, especially for a wedding or a special event, you know, you would want some sort of, you know, the, the attitude that you'd want to get from their materials is that it's a friendly, personal attention, that sort of thing. And this is the opposite of that. The fluffy pillow bed and breakfast, again, that doesn't look relaxing, that doesn't look comforting. you ponder that one. I think the idea is the whole point of plumbing is to get the pipe straight and all these letters are crooked. Hire me. <laughs> all right. Tickets go on sale for Megadeth and Iron Maiden. <laughs> Let's go swimming. Uh, that's a good one too. Computer Shack. High tech microcomputers. What's wrong with that? Yeah, that might be Radio Shack spot, which is unfortunate. At least it used to be. I don't know sure if this still is. This looks like it would be high tech in maybe 1979, right? This does not look at, at high tech uh, today. All right, and again, there, there's, a, there, you know, there's a whole list of these. And the idea is, is it's pretty obvious. And these, again, are extreme cases to, um, to, uh, to illustrate the point that you know, notice as you looked at these, immediately you had some sort of response. And then when you read the text, it's kind of like, what? That doesn't make sense. Now, I do want to ask a question. Is something like this ever appropriate? I'm advertising for a rock concert, and I make it look like an invitation to the royal wedding. All right? Is it ever good to intentionally contrast what you're saying and the way that you're saying it. Yeah. Uh, can you think of an example of one? Yeah, want to get a certain type of reaction. You want to get a certain type of reaction, exactly. Uh, I'll try to remember to bring this in at some point, but I have a, a poster, uh, it's in a book, but it's a poster 
This shows a picture of like five or six kids playing on the playground. All right? And um, it said uh, something like, pick out the drug dealer among these. And there's a contrast then between the message, which is talking about drug dealers, and the actual presentation. The presentation looks like it's just a picture of cute kids playing in the playground. All right? Now, the only thing I'll say with that is you better be careful because people are going to miss the point sometimes. You better make sure that your audience is going to get it. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to baffle people, right? And they're, they're not going to know. So I would say, yeah, sometimes it is appropriate to go the opposite direction. And that's when I looked at this, I thought, you know, yeah, that's bad probably most of the time, but I could see this being done effectively as well, you know. Um, at any rate, they, uh, lest we, we only focus on the negative, there is a page that talks about um, how to choose a font face. I'll uh, choose a typeface. What is your goal? First thing you have to do in order to choose a font face is form a strong impression in your mind about how you want your audience to react to the text. All right? Now, interestingly enough, Maybe you want to make a point with your typography and have a mental association that's created instantly when they see it. Or maybe you sort of want the typography to be like a clear glance that doesn't really add anything to it, just lets the message sort of shine through. All right. In this case, for example, there's nothing especially radical about the typography. You know, they're using probably Helvetica and, uh, or Ariel and uh, a serif font on that one. What is that saying? What does that choice tell you about what this person's intent was? Simplified. Yeah, they want to make it simple. They want to make sure that, you can, that it's readable, that you can read it, and you can understand it, and they're not going to, quote, flavor the text with anything special. They're not going to decorate it that much, all right? This will be the equivalent of me showing up in jeans and t-shirt, right? I'm not aiming to stand out, all right? I'm just wearing normal, everyday sort of clothes, all right? So what this typography choice says, even on this page, is they want their words to speak for them. They're not going to let the font do the speaking. All right? Legibility. All right? They talk about the difference between legibility and readability. All right? And not just, and, and the difference between the two. I think what they're saying is, this being a decorative uh, text, it's readable, but it's not particularly legible. That is, you kind of have to struggle struggle to read it. This with the, the, the shapes of the letters and the classic look is much more um, legible. Choose typefaces with generous spacing. Tight tracking causes the eyes to fill in visual gaps, all right, and so on down the line. Aspects of appropriateness. Here they're showing, for example, a CD certificate using two different fonts. One more of a decorative font, one more of a classic looking font. Which one do you think looks better? on the right, I would tend to say, so yeah, if I'm getting something official from a bank, I want it to look like that more than the one on the left. <laughs> Here there's sort of, this is, I think the person that did this is the same author that did the other one, so he's kind of stealing his own examples, but 
kick back and relax versus kick back and relax. There's a number of resources here that, that I do want you to go through. Um, and I'll point out uh, a few of them a, as we wrap up today and move in, uh, into the next time. Uh, I want to I want to talk about uh, these, and then I want to um, talk a little bit about the assignment. The web style guide is a great online resource, really about a lot of different design aspects, and. This sort of gives a longer, more formal looking description of typography, along with some great quotes. Typography exists to honor the content. All right. Sometimes the best way to honor the content is just let it speak for itself. Just use basic, plain old letters. Sometimes the best way to honor the content is by doing maybe something more with the typography. Typography is the balance and interplay of letter forms on a page, a verbal and visual equation, in other words, the words themselves, plus the way the words look, that helps the reader understand the form of it, along with um, the substance of the content. Other thing I want to say is good typography establishes a visual hierarchy. What that means is, again, the typography tells us that this is the site that we're on. This is the navigation. This is the main content. And, oh, yeah, by the way, here are some ads over off to the side. All those things, again, you can absorb just at a glance because the way the page is laid out lends itself to that. The choice of colors, the choice of fonts and positioning, space between things all lend themselves to that. At any rate, um, this book, which you can, you can actually purchase this book, the web style guide, but there's a version of it online as well. So almost every, almost every section that we cover, there's a good chapter in this book about it. So this is one of the, the, the reading. Consider this to be like part of your textbook, except you don't have to pay for it. All right? So, for example, emphasis. A web page of a solid body of text is hard to scan. All right? So therefore, we're going to vary things up a little bit. We're not going to have solid text. We're going to use space. We're going to use things to break up the text. Different colors, different font faces, different font sizes. Read through this again at your, at your own leisure. Let's see what other ones. Here are sort of the standard fonts that are typically used in web development. I know some of you have done um, basic HTML classes and, and basic web development. Some of you haven't, but this is a very common sort of styles that um, are used for text. In web development, you typically specify multiple fonts because you never know what font is going to be installed on what machine. Basic typography terms. I do have to confess this is not my strongest skill. All right. Here they define the serif fonts, the sans serif fonts, the point, the size of the fonts, the baseline, which is down here, the X height. If you notice, uh, one of the previous articles talked about one of their suggestions was have it with a, 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 uh, a high X height, they said. And that's what they mean from the how high a lowercase letter goes up um, again, letter spacing, they give some examples. It is good to refer to this. Uh, I wanted to have a little bit of a glossary as you're reading some of the other pages. If they use one of these terms, you'll, you'll likely find uh, the term defined on this page. Making web pages readable. Don't use too many font sizes. Use sans serif for all body copy. Oh, don't use too many sizes. Don't use too many faces. How you can emphasize, 
how you can have contrast, spacing text, and so on. This person recommends that you don't use more than three different main font sizes. They talk about the use of serif and sans serif fonts, and so on. So this is a good guideline, and so on. There is a film that in the past I've shown to my classes, and it's available on Netflix, any of you that have it. I think it's available even on Netflix streaming called Helvetica, that is about typography. And it's kind of a fun movie to watch, uh, believe it or not. Um, that might say more about my idea of fun than anything, but uh, it is kind of a cool movie. Um, I'm debating if I'm going to show it this term or not. I might show part of it. I did post a few clips. Actually, as I was looking at the clips, though, um, some t you know, you, you really only get a part of the story by looking at these clips. So I'm debating whether I want to show the entire uh, uh, movie or not. What's next for text? That's a good link. In other words, you know, can we do more online than just simply put static, plain old text out there? some things that have done been done in the past with typography, you know, like in those old books that had drawings and all that. The other portion of this unit is just about general interface design, and we'll, we'll hit on that probably uh, a bit later on. Now, as far as your assignment goes, uh, the design for the assignment is, is due um, on um, Monday, I believe. Um, let's shoot for that. Remember, I can always adjust if necessary. What I want you to do is I want you to absorb some of the great quotes that people have made about designing things. And some of these are designers of products, some of these are, are graphic designers or web designers. And so I've given you a list of, uh, I've given you a page that contains a list of quotes. I want you to go through and, and, and go through and look at those quotes and choose a theme. In other words, don't just pick the first ten quotes on the page. You know, pick quotes that, when taken together, express a unified thought. All right. Maybe, for example, and I sure hope I don't get fifteen of these now, but maybe, for example, your theme is simplicity. Look for quotes that are all talking about simplicity. Maybe your uh, Maybe your theme is emotion, designing that touches the emotion. You might look for quotes that deal with that. So I want you to go through those quotes, pick out ones that are especially relevant to your theme, and put together essentially a flash, I guess you could call it slideshow or animation, or anything that, that you want to, to call it. Put it together using the different techniques that we have talked about for typography. That is changing the color of text, changing um, spacing of text, that sort of thing. It's changing the size of text and so on. And then animate it somehow. Well, how can you animate it? You can have the text come in, going across the screen. You could have the text fade in. Um, we've talked about a variety of different animation techniques and things based on tweens, all right? that you could certainly apply in this one. All you have to do is, is take your text, make it a symbol, and then you can animate it, and you could have it fade in. Let me show you just a real simple example as we wrap up today. And if anyone has more questions, we can talk about it um, next time. But I could go into Flash.
And let's, let's animate a quote that I made today. I don't know if I'm the person that originally said this or not, but I'm going to take credit until someone proves otherwise. All right, let's go in here, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go and create a text box, and you can go in and type in emphasizing everything is the same as emphasizing nothing. And I can go and make this bigger. could do things like maybe I'm going to do that. Maybe that's my typography that I'm going to use. I'm going to have I'm going to emphasize everything and nothing and I'm going to make them the same color. Why? Because that's what my quote says, that emphasizing everything is the same as emphasizing nothing. So they have the same color. That, again, is a visual way to equate those two terms. Now what I can do is I can go turn this guy into a symbol, convert to symbol, and we could call it quote one. All right. Then we can go on this guy and make a motion tween. And we could go in and have it fade in. Go in frame one and make it fade in. So as the animation plays, it fades in. Now that's just one. Now one thing you definitely want to be aware of is make sure the quotes are slow enough that I can read them, or that the average person can read them. I will say if there was one flaw last semester, or, or last time I taught this class, is some people must think, you know, I don't know if you ever remember Evelyn Wood speed reading course. Some people must have thought Evelyn Wood was great in those because they had that text flying so fast that it was almost like a video game. Like, what did I say? What did I say? <laughs> so take your time. Be sure that if you're going to fade in the quote or if you're going to have it move across or whatever you're going to do to animate this, make sure that it leaves enough time for someone to actually read the words. All right? Okay. We went a little over time today. Um, next time we'll continue with this. At some point, I'm going to ask you, we're going to look at what you folks did for your thing last time, so don't think that I'm just going to discard that activity. At some time, we're going to look at it, discuss it, and then I'll ask you to redo it. And, and we'll see after we've talked about typography and after we've, you, we've gotten feedback and we've discussed each person's thing, let's take a look at it and see if you can do better. How would you change it? All right? Okay, we'll see you over in lab.